We're live and we're back. Well, we're actually home. We were home in Carroll, Iowa for the weekend, but now we're back in good old Sioux Falls, South Dakota for some Sunfish baseball as they host, well, who else? The Pier Trappers. Hello, fans. David Coyer bringing you all the action today on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream from home sweet home, Karis Park on the campus of Augustana University, the Sunfish took one out of the three played against Wheat City this weekend in some tough losses both on Friday and game two or excuse me Saturday and game two of the doubleheader on Sunday to fall to 10 and 12 still have yet to reach 500 in the record books on the season this the inaugural Sunfish season the peer trappers are back and well they've been struggling in the win column themselves six and 15 on the season currently on a 10 game losing streak that's right they're 0 for 10 in their last 10 games the sunfish are seven and three after dropping two to the whiskey jacks and mitch stone is the one who gets the nod for sioux falls back here at home this is his third straight start against the trappers he started off the season with a game against fremont and two in wheat city before playing or pitching his last three against the trappers all here at Karis Park. It's Caden Cardoso who leads it off for the trappers and we are underway with the first pitch. A swing and a miss on a fastball and it's underway 636 just a minute late with the first pitch here from Sioux Falls. A wind blowing out to right field. A fastball misses the outside corner. It's now one ball one strike. Temperature 83 degrees and partly cloudy here in Sioux Falls. It's cooled off quite a bit. The sun still shining, making it hot, the 1-1. One, one. Another fastball swung on and missed. It's now one ball and two strikes to Cardoso. The Sunfish and the Trappers have seen quite a lot of each other lately to the point where it's almost getting annoying for both of the teams. Here's the 1-2. Change up, high and away, swung on and missed by Cardoso. He's the first strikeout of the day. That brings up Patrick Connor, who made his season debut last week against Sioux Falls. But it's Mitch Stone, who already got his first strikeout of the day. That marks his 33rd, which is still good for third in the Expedition League. A slider misses low for ball one to Patrick Connor. Stone is 1-1 one one on the season with a 3.75 ERA as a slider misses away. Back-to-back -back sliders. That's the bread and butter for Mitch Stone. He started all five games he's appeared in with 24 innings pitched. A fastball. Bloopered into right field. Coming back is JT Mix who makes the catch over the, his back shoulder and embraces Dylan Cricket Danielson out in right field. They ran into each other into a nice, well... It was a hug. <laughs> That's something that you love to see. JT Mix finally back in the lineup himself and Will Olson, the two Augie boys. They missed a, a couple games. Olson didn't make the trip to pier last week. He was a groomsman in a teammate's wedding as a fastball is swung on and missed by Eric Mask, another lefty on this Trappers team. Mix went to the wedding this weekend and so that's why they're back in the lineup. A changeup just misses away. Stone only likes to use that changeup on lefties, he's told me. So it's cool that he's we're seeing it a little bit more now as a fastball misses away. Even on some lefties early in the season, hadn't seen him use it all too much. Mast is batting 240 on the season. The 2-1, a fastball at the knees. He had a pinch hit or a pinch running appearance on Sunday against the Saber Dogs. Went 0 for 3 in his last actual start, which was on Saturday in the 8 to 6 loss to Sewers Valley. Slider in the dirt, swung on and missed. Olsen will pop out, fire it down. Two strikeouts to get the one, two, three started in the first inning for Mitch Stone as he confidently walks off the field. 
The Trappers go three up, three down. We'll see what the Sunfish do in the bottom half of the first inning at Karis Park. Declan Beers is the one who gets it, gets the first at bat for the Sunfish in this game. He's designated hitting today. It's Kenny or Declan Beers, Kenny Dutka, Will Olson, the one, two, three hitters. And here's the first pitch from Jared Shelton. It's a high chopper right up the middle coming over is Connor. He gloves it and fires for out number one. First pitch swinging from Declan Beers, and he's retired quickly. Zeff Hoffbauer, Norris McClure, Dylan Cricket, Danielson in the 4-5-6. And Benito Garcia, Tanner Wilson, JT Mix closing it off for Sioux Falls in this lineup. So it's Kenny Dutka who steps up against Jared Shelton. He's first pitch swinging. Grounder through the hole on the right side. Pass to diving Braden Cordes for a one-out single. Dutka. Kept his bat, hot bat going from this past weekend. He had a home run on Father's Day. And that brings his hitting streak now to six in a row. Went one for three in game two on Sunday, two for five in game one. And then on Saturday went two for four. A strong weekend for Kenny, and he's keeping it going. And Will Olson finally back in the lineup. Takes a slider high. Olsen, since joining Sioux Falls in just five games, leads the team with a 412 batting average. Has a double, a triple, and a home run. So he has a cycle for the season, if you want to call it that, as Shelton steps off. His last game all the way back on the 15th against the Trappers. Olsen takes one into right field. That's going to fall for a base hit. You know, just that I was talking about how good of a hitter he is. Well, there he goes. He's gotten a hit in every single game. Six-game hitting streak for the Sunfish catcher. And Zeff Hoffbauer from Pensacola State College steps up. He went one for three in game two, the eight to six loss on Sunday. But Jared Shelton, last time he pitched was against the Sunfish. In fact, his last three outings were against Sioux Falls. He got the loss in the 9-3 Sunfish victory in Pier last week. A slider hits the outside corner. In that game, he went four innings of three-run, five-hit baseball, six walks, six strikeouts. On the season, a 4.58 ERA 
as a curveball misses inside. It's now one ball, one strike. 17 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's pitched 13 and a third against Sioux Falls. Slider misses inside. Hoff Power and a bunch of the Sunfish team went to Omaha yesterday to watch the College World Series. Hoff Power rolls over one in the left field. Dutka gets the stop sign at third. A cutoff by Perez. The tag gets him at third. Dutka had a hard turnaround third, ran through the stop sign of Lane Hovde before he put the brakes on and turned around. A nice cutoff by third baseman Brendan Perez. Tossed it over to Patrick Connor, who was backing him up. So another base running error by Sioux Falls. Takes a runner off, and now there's two outs with just a runner on first and second. Instead of one out, base is loaded. Base running errors has really killed the Sunfish offensive productivity this season. Norris McClure takes a fastball away. The lefty, just like his teammate Will Olson, as he takes a slider low, has been absolutely tearing it up since joining Sioux Falls. He had a short stint in the Northwoods League with the Wisconsin Woodchucks. He's had a hit through five games, including going one for two in game one against Wheat City. A slider now hits the inside corner. It's two balls, one strike. McClure has hit two home runs against Sunfish, or excuse me, Trapper pitching, including that 9-3 victory on the 17th. Another breaking ball is lost inside. It's three balls, one strike. McClure got his first long ball of the season as it went just to the Karis Park scoreboard in right center field. Time is called by McClure. Wind blowing out to right, and the wind was the friend of the sunfish this weekend in Carroll, Iowa, especially in Sunday's game one, the 3 1. Grounded shortstop. Connor plays it off the bounce, throws it over to first, and McClure is not in time. A very bang-bang play, but Joey Bermonti, the 6'5 first baseman, makes the stretch for out number three. So a costly base running mistake by Kenny Dutka leads to two left stranded for Sioux Falls. We remain scoreless after one from Karis Park. Joey Bramante leads off the top of the second inning. It's Joey Bramante, Colin Adams, Richie Williams as a slider misses at the ankles. Stone has been throwing that one a lot today, as he does usually. Brendan Perez, Bennett Osborne, and Braden Cordes as another slider misses low. 
Perez, Osborne, Cordis round out this Trappers lineup. Here's the 2-0. Fastball inside. It's three balls, no strikes to Bermonti. Tanner Wilson, Kenny Dutka, Dylan Cricket, Danielson from left to right in the outfield. The 3-0 from Stone, a fastball right down the middle for strike one. It's McClure, Garcia on the left side, JT Mix and Zeph Hoffpower on the right. Will Olson calling the signs behind the dish as the fastball misses to walk Bramante. Joey Bramante with his seventh walk of the season. Has only known three teams in the Expedition League, but the most, the Sunfish. Four times played against Sioux Falls, otherwise three against the Moo and three against Sewers Valley. He draws the leadoff walk for Colin Adams, who the last time Adams faced Sioux Falls, the slider hits at the knees for strike one. Well, Adams... Did not do too hot. He had not just a golden sombrero. He had a platinum sombrero, which means five strikeouts. He gets a piece of one and fouls it over the netting. That's right. He didn't strike out just one or two or three times. No, he struck out five times in one game against the Sunfish back on the 16th. The 13-5 to routing by Sioux Falls. Here's the 0-2. Lines this one into center field. Drifting back is Dutka, and he makes the catch on the run for out number one. So not in a strikeout, but Adams still retired for out number one. Richie Williams, who has also struggled this season just against Sioux Falls. Richie Williams is just batting a 91.091 against Sioux Falls. He struck out seven times, which is tied for second as he gets a high chopper that's going straight foul into the hands of a batter on deck. That's Bennett Osborne. Joey Bramante and Richie Williams each have struck out seven times. It's only Colin Adams who's struck out more times against Sioux Falls, and that's 11 Mitch Stone, grounder to Garcia, flip to Mix, over to first. A 6-4-3 double play to end the inning. And that's the first double play of the game for Sioux Falls. They had a season-high four against Pierre earlier this season. We'll see what they can do as this game goes on. But that's six batters face. And with despite the walk from Bramante, he's retired on the double play. Six batters face, six batters retired. The Trappers go down, and it's still scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second inning. After walking the leadoff man aboard, Mitch Stone gets out of it with a flyout and a double play. 
He's looking on fire tonight. Dylan Cricket Danielson faces Jared Shelton, who throws a fastball right down the middle to a looking Dylan Cricket Danielson. Cricket Danielson. I was talking about Colin Adams, who had the platinum sombrero in a game against Sioux Falls. Well, actually, the next night, not only did Brendan Perez, who's playing third base tonight, slider swung on and missed by Cricket Danielson. He's down 0-2. Not only did Brendan Perez have a golden sombrero, four straight strikeouts the following night, but so did Cricket Danielson. Twice this season he has he gone 0 for with four strikeouts, the 0-2, a fastball high. And, well, we talked about how much Bramante has played against the Sunfish. Talk about playing a lot against the same team. This marks the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This marks the eighth time Cricket Danielson has played against the Trappers as he takes a slider looking for strikeout number one for Jared Shelton and out number one in the bottom of the second inning. That's the 16th strikeout of the season for Cricket Danielson. And, well, a lot of them seem to happen against Peer. He's had 10 on the season. Pitch misses just inside to Benito Garcia. Garcia and Cricket Danielson lead the Sunfish with strikeouts against the Trappers. Well, now Car Cricket Danielson stands atop as a curveball is swung on and missed by Benito. Benito was on a cold streak for a little bit, a lot of it against Pierre after starting the first couple games of the season between the two teams, but got a couple nights off, and, well, he's back on a little bit of a hitting streak as the slider misses away. His bat's gotten a little hotter, including the game on the 16th when he went two for four, and he had his solo home run. Here's the 2-1. Breaking ball misses in the dirt and bounces to the back netting for ball three. It's three balls in one strike to Garcia. One thing that the Trappers do utilize is the use of scouting. Their head of baseball ops looks at tape and studies spray charts as a slider is swung on and missed. It's three balls, two strikes now to Garcia. And one thing that he, at least he told me before the game, the last game in Pier, last Thursday, was, well, Garcia does like to hit it kind of up the middle. He swings through a breaking ball for strike three. It's back-to-back -back strikeouts for Jared Shelton. And with Garcia hitting it up the middle, while well, he finished that, Cordes was playing just to the first base side of second base on the outfield grass. It's where Cole Yancey liked to play where Garcia would line out to him twice or at least ground it to him. Tanner Wilson, we haven't seen him in a little bit. He last played last Wednesday. The slider from Shelton hits the outside corner for a strike. Wilson had some health issues, including Thursday's game as a curveball now misses away. And well, it it, I think it was due to the heat, but it was also something happening on his side. As Shelton's really been utilizing the breaking ball, haven't seen a fastball in a while. That one misses in the left-handed batter's box. It's two balls, one strike to Wilson. And he hadn't, he just hadn't been feeling all too well. And, well, he didn't play against Wheat City. He's gotten the weekend off, and he's back in the lineup. Shelton steps off. Wilson taps his bat on his back hamstring a couple times and gets back in the box set. Here's the 2-1. Swung on and missed. There's the fastball. Actually looked like, sounded like Wilson might have gotten a piece of that one. No foul tip motion was called. It's deuces wild across the board. The pitch from Shelton. Slider away. It's now a full count. But Wilson, I did say that Will Olson led the team in batting average. I thought that Tanner Wilson might have had a few less games than Olsen as a breaking ball misses in the dirt. And with two outs, Wilson draws the walk. But Tanner Wilson batting 450 on the season. 
He's, again, one of those other guys who has had a hit in every one of his games thus far. We'll see what he can do today. We're in the nine spot in the Sunfish lineup for JT Mix. He was a bat that was missing this weekend, and in a one-run one, uh, loss on Saturday and a two-run loss on Game two on Sunday, he was a bat that probably could have made a difference as a curveball is swung on and missed by Mix to lead off the at-bat. Mix on Thursday went two for five with a run, a walk, and two stolen bases. Once he gets on, he's an animal on those base paths. Another curveball this time inside, swung on and missed. Mix is quickly down 0-2. 349 average on the season. With 13 walks, he's got a 509 on base percentage. The runner on first, Wilson goes. Here's the 0-2. Pitch misses high, but the throw down from Colin Adams doesn't get there in time. And that is the 95th stolen base of the season for Sioux Falls. And it comes from Tanner Wilson. That marks his sixth of the season. And now runner in scoring position with two away. In the bottom of the second inning, we're still scoreless from Karis Park. Mix gets a pizza one, but fouls it out of play. And Mix has switched between being a top of the order type of guy or a bottom order type of guy. When I asked Walker Bullington about it, he's like, well, Mix is a one, two, eight, nine hitter. He lines that one in the left field. It's going to fall for a base hit. Wilson rounding third. The throw in from Bennett Osborne's cut off by Perez at third. And a two out RBI single from JT Mix puts the Sunfish up one nothing in the bottom of the second inning. A nice pulled ball by Mix in the left field fell in front of Osborne. And he likes to pull the ball a lot, does Mix. And, well, he also likes to steal a lot as he's already taking a very liberal lead at first while Declan Beers, the lefty, steps up. Curveball misses low and away to Beers. It's now one ball, no strikes. And Mix, he, on his secondary lead, he almost acted as if he was about to take off, try and distract Shelton. Sunfish runners like to do that a lot. Curveball misses in the dirt. It's two balls, no strikes to Beers. Declan got mad at me this weekend. And I didn't even realize this until he told me later at the hotel. Because on the podcast, the Fish Tank podcast last week with Declan Beers, fastball misses away. It's 3-0. and On the podcast, I brought up how he had was on a hitting streak. 11-game hitting streak. And, well, he didn't like that because he said, well, wait, now it's going to end, thanks. And, well, it did end in Saturday's game. A curveball bounces away from Adams, but it's ball four. So JT makes it second no matter what. And Declan Beers makes his way down to first. And, well, he, he's just like, dude, like, thanks for ending it. And I'm just like, hey, you had gotten – uh, you gotten a hit in 11 straight games. And I'm just like, it was bound to end anyway. You know, the, the, the nature of, you know, hitting streaks after it hits a, a decent number, it's going to end. And he's like, yeah, I know. I'm not mad. Especially because in his first 11 games, Beers had gotten 11 or a hit in every game. And, well, it was bound to end. He went 0 for 2, but he walked three times in the 6 to 5 Sunfish loss. He started it up again going two for four in game two on Sunday. And he doesn't have a hit tonight yet as Kenny Dutka takes a curveball in the dirt. Mix stays at second. But we'll see what Beers can do tonight. Kenny Dutka has already gotten a single. His parents and brother still in town. They made the trip up from Richmond, Texas. As a sweeping curveball hits the outer part of the zone to the lefty Dutka for strike one. They made it to Carroll, Iowa for Father's Day. Dutka swings through another breaking ball for strike two. And it was on Father's Day that Kenny Dutka was one of 
three home runs in game one against the Whiskey Jacks, but he was one of two who hit it in front of his dad. Adonis Forte hit it in front of his dad as well as Dutka rolls over one and it goes into the hands of Benito Garcia who popped out of the dugout. And he rolled it to Will Olsen who was standing on deck. Olsen was not looking and well now Will had to chase it all the way to the backstop. One ball, two strikes from Jared Shelton. He steps off as he was looking back at Ken, or excuse me, JT Mix at second. Two outs, and Dutka gets drilled. The Trappers pitching staff has allowed the most hit batters, or they've hit the most batters. And that's, well, favorable for Sioux Falls while they don't want to get hit. They do get hit a lot. That is the 41st hit by pitch this season. And Kenny Dutka is not one who gets hit quite a bit. Jonathan Brandon was hit this weekend, and he marked the last active player on this Sunfish team who had he had not been hit yet, and he got hit. Will Olson takes a slider across the middle for strike one. Yeah, it's just the second time Kenny's been hit all season. Jesus Lee Cohn and the injured Blake Burrows lead the team with five each. Here's the 0-1. Olsen off the end of the bat to the back netting. Dangerous man to have up with the bases loaded is Will Olsen. It's a 1-0 ball game after Tanner Wilson scored. On the RBI single by JT Mix, who's now at third. Beers on second, Dutka on first. Here's the 0-2 to Olsen. He takes the slider on the outside corner. Or just missed the outside corner. It was called a ball. The one ball, two-strike pitch from Shelton. Here it is, a slider low. Deuce is wild. The sun has now gone behind some clouds. It was partly cloudy. It's, oh, there's still some, you can still see some blue sky peeking through some of those clouds. The wind blowing out to right field, which is the shortest part of the ballpark here at Karis Park. Off the end of the batter, grounder down the right side, but foul, it bounces off of the fence by the bullpen. 310 to the right field corner, 320 to the left. 395 dead center here at Ronkin Field in Karis Park. The 2-2 to Olsen. Swung on and missed. Curveball got him. The bases are left stranded, but the Sunfish cross one on the RBI single from JT Mix. It's a 1-0 ball game after two. Sunfish lead from Sioux Falls. Mitch Stone returns to work against the Trappers. He has appeared in two games against Pierre, which is not the most out of the team. Austin Oblast has made three appearances. He's actually 2-0. Oh. 
He's come in to relieve, and here's the first pitch to Brendan Perez, a slider in the dirt. Nick Cavillier also has three appearances. He's got the highest ERA against the Trappers as Perez skyrockets one into the infield. Charging in from third is McClure. He's calling off. Garcia makes the catch on the mound. It started drifting from just to the third base side of the mound to rising up on the dirt. And McClure made it roughly just at his shoulder. But a catch nonetheless by Norris McClure to retire Brendan Perez, who let off the third. It brings up Bennett Osborne. Osborne this season. Batting 128. Check swing, appeal down to first. He did not go on the fastball away. McClure went 0 for 3 on Sunday against the Sabre Dogs. Did have a walk and it scored when he did reach. Fastball swung on and missed. But Stone, in nine innings pitched against the Trappers, has allowed just five earned runs, but has struck out 15. He strikes out everyone. Osborne rolls over one into the Trappers' dugout. He's down one ball, two strikes. And the five ERA against the Trappers is just a bit higher than against the rest of the season. A slider hits the lower part of the zone for strike three, and that gets Osborne looking. That's strikeout number three today for Mitch Stone. His record is eight in one game. And he did get the eight through four innings. Braden Cordes. There's some microphone troubles here at Karis Park. Stone was starting his windup and ends up stepping off. Seems a bit frustrated with what's going on here. There's some confusion between everyone. And Chad Williams says one ball, no strikes. I'm confused on there was no pitch thrown, and I think since he was starting his windup and stepped off, there is a ball as now a slider misses low. It's 2-0. Oh. A whole weird of event, uh, turn of events here to Brayton Cordes. Now a fastball is lined down the left field line. That's a fair ball. The first hit allowed, it rolls all the way into the left field corner, and Cordes is going to run into second, standing up for a two-out double. Stone probably not too happy with the Sunfish staff here at Karis Park as he was starting his windup, and there was some feedback that came over the speakers here, and he was getting frustrated with that. And since he has started his windup, I believe he was credited with a ball. His second pitch, a slider low. And then the music had been playing throughout everything. And so I think his rhythm was just thrown off. He left a fastball over the plate for Cordes. That's the first hit of the ball game. As we're back to the top of the order, Caden Cardoso takes a fastball away. Hopefully I got everything relayed to everyone watching it was a weird turn of events the sunfish still hold a one nothing lead with a two out runner in scoring position for cardoso who was struck out in his first at bat he hooks one far out of the play into the parking lot that died when it hit some of those rocks in the i don't know that barrier that's in the parking lot i'm not even going to dive into that one ball one strike to cardoso who Cardoso is, himself has kind of been a menace at the plate for the Trappers against Sioux Falls. Text a fastball high and away. Check swing. Did he go? No, he didn't. Chad Williams behind the plate. Alex Shoemaker in the field. Both teams familiar with this umpiring crew. Cardoso gets on against the Sunfish. 467 on base percentage. He's walked a total of nine times against Sioux Falls. Leads the team in that category. Two balls, one strike now to Cardoso. 
Swings through a fastball for strike two. And up until that point, well, despite the walk to Bramante, who was still retired on a double play, I'd say that was kind of six up, six down. He had read it, it wasn't a perfect game anymore because he had walked the batter, but still had faced the minimum amount of batters, even with the first two outs of the inning as well, before that two out double. Time is called now by Cardoso as Stone was looking in. Stoneberry methodical on the mound, likes to play the mental games, keeps a stone face, pardon the pun, all the time as a change up is foul tipped into the glove of Will Olson for strike three. Cardoso has had a couple words with home plate umpire Chad Williams, but a strikeout number four for Mitch Stone. It's still one nothing after just the two out double leaves Cordis stranded. The Sunfish step up in the bottom of the third inning with a one run lead. We'll see what they can do after this. Zeph Hoffpower from Pensacola State leads it off in the bottom of the third inning. The Sunfish still hold their 1-0 lead over the Pier Trappers. And right now with the one-run lead, the Sunfish are, well, they're 50-50. Hoffpower gets a hold of that one, but he lines it straight to Osborne, who literally took about a half step in front of him. He didn't even look like he was scared as that ball was hit directly to him for out number one. Norris McClure gets his second at bat. He grounded out to end the first inning, but the Sunfish are four and four in one run ball games. And out of those eight games, as McClure lines one straight back at Shelton, who luckily got his glove up, his glove fell off and he recovered, picked up the ball and threw it over to first. He looks a little frustrated. I, he got his glove up, Chad Williams coming out to have a, a, a couple words just to calm him down. Shelton doesn't look too happy, and I think, I'm not sure if it's actual frustration. I think he's just a little, got to get the heart rate down after getting a liner right up the middle to him. Alex Shoemaker and Chad Williams still talking to him on the mound, making sure he's okay. Shoemaker looks like he's got a little bit of a smile on out there, just joking around, trying to ease the nerves. That was a very hard hit ball. I'm gonna step away for a moment, fans, just one second.
apologies about that, fans. Umpire Chad Williams was looking up at me, and I had to relay a message to our sound directors in the booth to my right. We're back now. On the air on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream, home of at Karis Park, one out Norris McClure at first. A slider swung on and missed by Dylan Cricket Danielson. Just when I think I'm getting in a roll on my broadcast, there always seems to be one thing that seems to kind of go wrong and I get a wrench thrown in there. Let's have, we need to have a, a game where it's an errorless broadcast on my part. McClure takes off, slider misses low, the throw down from Adams. Pulls Connor off the base. No one's playing short. McClure, as the ball rolls over there, McClure takes third. The throw from Adams pulled Cordis off the base. It wasn't Connor. It was Cordis. And while the ball hit him, it ended up backspinning, rolling into the hole at short, and since Patrick Connor was backing up. McClure just swiped third as well. Breaking ball misses high. So I'm going to see. That's for sure stolen base. We'll see how it was got him over to third. I'm not sure if that's going to be a double stolen base or an error on someone's part. A time is called. Looked like Shelton stepped off. Still don't have the official score up yet, but Dylan Cricket Danielson, who led off the second inning, striking out looking. Adam sets up outside as the slider misses away. Three balls, one strike now to Cricket Danielson. The second inning was the inning where Tanner Wilson would walk and later score after a stolen base and an RBI single by JT Mix. Swing on a miss on a very long slider. Went started in about the top part of the zone and went straight to the bottom opposite corner. It was the ins top inside corner to the bottom outside corner. So they're giving him a double stolen base on that. Here's the full count to Cricket Danielson. Takes another breaking ball right across the plate. Actually, it almost looked like a fastball. We don't have the radar gun on here at Karis Park. But Cricket Danielson with back-to-back -back strike out looking. In his last six at-bats against the Trappers, Dylan Cricket Danielson has struck out all six times. Here's Benito Garcia, who struck out swinging. Two away, fastball right down the middle to Garcia. He takes a little swing afterwards, just another practice swing. But in one-run ball games, I'd kind of started getting into that. The Trappers and the Sunfish have had four games out of their nine played thus far this season. The 0-1, the slider away. Four out of the nine have been one-run ball games, and they've been split. The Sunfish did have... Two of them that were very late. One of them an 11-10 victory that they took away from Pierre. A sweeping slider misses away. It's two balls, one strike. Those of you College World Series baseball fans, there's score update. Bottom of the fourth inning, Virginia still holds a 4-0 lead over Mississippi State. Fastball misses high. The appeal down to Alex Shoemaker in the field did not go. It's three balls, one strike to Garcia as the pitch missed high. It didn't even look like Garcia barely took the bat off his shoulder. It was Shelton himself who asked for the appeal. The 3-1. Breaking ball in the left-handed batter's box blocked by Colin Adams and with two outs. There are now runners at the corners for Sioux Falls for Tanner Wilson. And Wilson, again, he's been hot this season. 
looking to drive. He scored, and he's looking to try and drive in a run of his own. Sunfish still lead by one over the Trappers. Slider hits the outside corner for strike one. The Sunfish wearing their gray tops, white bottoms combo with the black hats and teal brims. There goes Garcia to second. A opposite field liner is going to fall for a base hit. Garcia's on his way to third. Norris McClure scores easily. The throw over to Perez. He throws it back to second. And a nice grab by Braden Cordes, but the tag not in time. McClure scores. Garcia makes it all the way over to third on the opposite field liner by Tanner Wilson. That's going to be a single. And he advances to second on the throw by Eric Mast. Benito Garcia also advanced on the throw to third. McClure scores. It's an RBI single for Tanner Wilson. It's now a 2-0 ball game. JT Mix to, takes a pitch low for ball one. When you get into the 10th game, played between two teams in a span of a month. They've played 10 times in the month of June. As the slider misses low and away as music starts playing during the pitch. Mix ahead, two balls, no strikes. But when you get to this point in the, in the season where you've played 10 games in one month, the slider just misses the outside corner. It looked like Chad Williams wanted to call the strike. Shelton asks for the appeal again. Shoemaker says, no way, Jose. It's now three balls, no strike to mix. And it seems like the Sunfish had taken their time getting used to the Trappers pitching. Time is called as Shelton steps off, walks off the dirt. But it, it didn't start off that way. The Sunfish won game one of the series, the season series, before losing three straight in pier. And I think that had to do with, well, it was early on in the season. The Sunfish were still getting all their players in here, still getting to know each other. But they'd also been on the road a lot. And the Trappers are fairly successful at home as... Shelton loses him with a fastball high. We're back to the top of the lineup. Base is loaded now with two outs. The Trappers on the road are 1-11. They're more comfortable back in Hyde Stadium. And it, it really has showed because at Hyde Stadium, they went 3-0 against Sioux Falls before this past two-game homestand for Pier against Sioux Falls. They went 0-2. Sunfish got the clean sweep. Two outs to Declan Beers. Fastball misses at the ankles. And while the Trappers, their run, one road win is here in Sioux Falls. It was the win right before they lost and then got swept by Fremont as Beers almost gets hit on the inside on a slider. It was the loss to Sioux Falls which sparked the 10-game losing streak for Pier. And while that's because they were on the road in Fremont, they had a one game on the road here before going back home for two. Fastball just misses the outside corner. It's three balls, no strikes from Shelton, who's in danger of walking home a run. And then three games up in Minot against the Sewers Valley Saber Dogs before now returning to Sioux Falls. Trappers haven't been home a lot in those 10 games as Shelton misses away and a four pitch walk scores a run for, ben for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. Benito Garcia crosses and it's now three nothing Sioux Falls who no longer have to worry about that one run, well, how they're split with the Trappers in one-run ball games. Walker Bullington's out talking to Chad Williams as 
the director of baseball operations. His first name's Nolan. I'll get his last name. I know what it is. Summerfeld. He's the baseball ops intern for Pierre. And while on the road, he serves as the first base coach for the Trappers. He was the one who was talking to me about Benito Garcia and his hitting style. But now he's out talking to Shelton, also out there, Colin Adams. The inning led off with a first pitch fly out to left by Zeph Hoffpower before Norris McClure would single right back at Shelton to extend his hitting streak to six. A strikeout by Dylan Cricket Danielson, and, well, just like the second inning, both runs have scored with two outs. So with two outs, the bases are still loaded for Kenny Dutka. There have been two singles thus far in the game, but the walks once again killing the Trappers. They came into today's game with 188, which led the league as a fifth straight ball is thrown by Shelton. Actually, if you date it back to JT mixes, that's probably more than just five straight. Dutka takes a slider across the middle for strike one. One run crossed in the second, two in the third thus far. It's a three-nothing ball game. Sunfish, the one-one to Dutka. Takes a fastball high. Kenny likes to search for those fastballs, but He's pretty good at making contact with some sliders as well and can even pull a curveball or two here or there. As he pulls one down the right field line, that's hooking, just foul. It bounced just to the right, down the right field line and bounced into the hand of Nick Cavilia, it looks like, who throws it into Tyler Olmstead. It's a slow roller, Olmstead having to go down the right field line a bit to come grab that one, making him work. Two balls, two strikes, with two outs, bases loaded to Kenny Dutka. Dutka not the strongest two-out hitter. As he bloops one to short, coming over is Connor, who with a little upright trot makes easy work of it. A soft pop-up to shortstop. But the Sunfish tack on two more off two hits, no errors. The bases are left loaded again. It's a 3-0 ball game from Karis Park. Mitch Stone back in his fourth inning of work. He winds and delivers a fastball that misses low to the leadoff man, Patrick Connor. It's Patrick Connor, Eric Mass, Joey Permonti. The two, three, four hitters. As Connor rolls over one. Connor made his debut last Tuesday against Sioux Falls himself. And his teammate, Brennan Van Bruzigan. Actually, it was last Thursday, my correction. 
slider hits at the knees. Tuesday, they were here in Sioux Falls. It was the 9-3 Sunfish win on Thursday that Connor and Van Bruzigan made their debuts. A fastball lined into center field. Dutka trots to his right to make the catch. Connor 0 for 2 now on the day, and Eric Mast hitting in the three spot, and for good reason. He's batting 240. One of the better hitters on the Sunfish team, especially, well, or excuse me, Pierre, not Sunfish. He's a trapper. He shows bunt, but takes the fastball instead at the knees. And, well, while the Sunfish in almost every statistical category are about middle of the pack to a little bit higher in the Expedition League. A fastball gets away from Mix or Stone, excuse me, who does a pirouette in front of the mound to come get it. Correction, it was called a strike on the outside corner. Now a fastball misses inside, it's 1-1. So while both teams, or then the, the trappers are basically dead last or bottom three in every statistical category. The 2-1 fastball swung on and missed. It's an even 2-2. Two -two. They seem to you know pull the best or the worst depending on who you're looking at out of each other. The Trappers bat 245 against Sunfish pitching while they're 228 on the season. A fastball foul tipped on the outside corner into the glove of Will Olson. That's strikeout number five for Mitch Stone and out number two of this fourth inning. The Sunfish lead by three. But the Trappers, yeah, they, they're batting 245 against Sioux Falls. Again, that's coming into today's game, while Sioux Falls, on the other hand, as a fastball misses high to Joey Bermonti, who walked in the second inning, was later doubled up. The Sunfish are betting 260. This time a slider misses or hits the outside corner, but is swung on and missed by Bramante. It's a strike either way. Stone winds and delivers on the 1-1. Fastball inside. The Sunfish bat 20 points lower against the Trappers. 260 over their season average of 280. Slider swung on and missed by Bramante. Brings the count even to two balls, two strikes. And it seems like the Sunfish, they play to the level of their opponents. Slider misses in the dirt. It's three balls, two strikes now to Bramante, who's in Stone's in danger of walking him aboard for the second time. Against the Fremont Moo earlier this season, I think is really the only exception. Here's the payoff pitch from Stone. Fastball, got him looking at the knees. We'll get to the rest of that in the bottom half of the fourth inning. A three up, three down in the fourth inning with a pair of strikeouts for Mitch Stone. He has six on the day. It's a three nothing ball game as we head to the bottom of the fourth inning.
Will Olson will lead it off here in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Sunfish still lead by three. And I believe, yes, we do. We have a new pitcher on the mound. It's Fisher Rausch relieving Jared Shelton. Rausch made his season debut last week against Sioux Falls. Misses with a fastball high in his first pitch in this appearance. Roush from Valley Park, Missouri. He's a SEMO product as Olsen drills one down the third baseline, but it was foul. Actually, correction, this was, that was his second appearance. I forgot he did make his season debut against the Moo. He went five innings of six hit, four run baseball. Three of those runs were earned. Three walks, six strikeouts in the 13 to five Wednesday loss. Olsen grounds one to short. Connor plays it off the short hop, fires it over to first for out number one. Zeff Hoffpower, who had a hard hit ball to left that was easily caught by Osborne his last time up, takes a whack at it again. 5.68 ERA in two games played, six in the third innings pitch, nine strikeouts for Roush, who's from SEMO, his teammate Adonis Forte in the dugout for Sioux Falls. Pitch missed away as Joey Bermonti has his hands up like touchdown over at first, but in disbelief. The 1-0, a curveball swung on and missed by Hoffpower for strike one. So what I was getting at at the end of the top half of the inning was, well, the Sunfish team, aside from the first two games against the Fremont Moo, they seem to play up to their competition or play down to their competition. A slider misses low and away. It's two balls, one strike. They play to the level of their competition. When they play against the Wheat City Whiskey Jacks, even this weekend, there's a little bit of sloppy baseball from the Sunfish. Opposite field, but hooking foul off the end of the battle. Hoff power. It's two balls, two strikes. And when they play the Trappers, again, the Trappers offensively are not the best team. Defensively, they are top three in errors. And Hoff power takes a fastball high into shallow right field. And drifting back was Cordes, who makes the easy catch. Off power, just on the end of the barrel. Couldn't get all of that one as he flies out again. And it's two up, two down for Roush in his first inning of work. And Norris McClure, who singled and scored in the third inning, sees Roush for the first time. Fastball just misses high. But then when the Sewers Valley Sabre Dogs came into town, that was the most offensively productive that the Sunfish have been. A fastball now misses low and away to McClure. Still a lefty-righty matchup. McClure the lefty. The Trappers sub in another righty pitcher in Roush. Here's the 2-0. Fastball drilled high to left field. Drifting back is Osborne. He's at the warning track and makes the grab. The wind is blowing to right field, so McClure, who's usually a pull hitter, couldn't get all of that one. It's a three-up, three-down inning in Roush's first inning of work. It's 3 nothing Sunfish after four from Sioux Falls. Walking out again is Stone. We'll see how he does in his fifth inning when we return.
Back in the top of the fifth, Stone's first pitch to Colin Adams as a slider on the inside corner. Stone again, very methodical when he pitches, when he wants to. Adams skyrockets one deep to right field, carrying back, cricket at the wall, that's gone. Colin Adams, who had gone 0 for 6 in his last six at-bats against the Sunfish, including five strikeouts, takes one high and deep opposite field. Maybe a little help from the strong breeze going out there, but it's now 3-1. The Sunfish still lead off the long ball by Adams. And Colin Adams, well, when he started off the season after debuting against Sioux Falls, a pitch from Stone, he's quick back in his work even after allowing the home run, gets a strike to Richie Williams. That's the first home run of the season for Adams. Bunt shown, Williams bunts it straight back down and behind the plate, he's down 0-2. Colin, Colin Adams, he started off, he debuted back on the fifth against the Sunfish. Went two for three and one for three in his first two games before going hitless until June 11th against the Moo. Just had a 303 slugging percentage. Fastball misses high. But just a 303 slugging percentage. Only had two doubles as extra base hits on the season. Takes one over the right field wall. Fastball swung on and missed. That's strikeout number seven for Mitch Stone. He had a pair of them in the fourth, a pair of them in the third, and a pair of them in the first. His strikeouts come in twos, does Mitch Stone. That's his seventh strikeout today. And on the season, I believe that's strikeout 39. A liner in the left field is going to fall in front of a charging Wilson. Stone puts his hands on his head, wondering why his left fielder maybe couldn't come in and get that one. Just the third hit of the day allowed for Stone off the bat of Brendan Perez. So confirmed strikeout number 39 for Mitch Stone. That brings up Bennett Osborne. Osborne takes a fastball inside for ball one. One out, runner at first. A leadoff home run by Colin Adams brought the lead down to just two for Sioux Falls and then a strikeout by Richie Williams and a single by Brendan Perez put us where we are now. This one drilled into right field. Cricket Danielson creeping to his right makes the catch. I think he might have almost thought that was out number three or he was just trotting back to where he was. Who knows? His body language almost made it look like it was out three, but it's just out number two. And Braden Cordes from the nine spot in this Trappers lineup gets his second time around. He was the first hit of the ball game for Peer with his two out double. Takes a slider just off the outside corner. Cordes has been a beacon of hope for the Trappers in the past five games. A slider now hits the outside corner for strike one. The Trappers are betting 218 in their past 10. Which, well, they are 0 for 10. But Cordes is batting 308 as the slider bounces in the dirt, backhanded by Olsen. The last five, Cordes is batting 308 with just one RBI. But he's been getting on base for this Trappers team. A slider hits at the knees. It's now two balls, two strikes from Stone. He's over at second tonight since Patrick Connor has come. Connor's been taking over that shortstop spot. Slider misses high. Three straight sliders from Stone. Two of them for strikes, one of them for a ball. It's a full count with two outs and runner on first. Stone checks over, runner goes. This one drilled high. 
to left center and deep. Tanner Wilson getting to the warning track. There's a collision between Dutka and Wilson. Wilson was in front of Dutka. Must have been a miscommunication. Wilson holds on to the ball. I hope both of them are okay. The ball was caught just in front of the warning track in deep left center field. But Wilson and Dutka on the miscommunication collide. Perez is stranded, but the home run by Colin Adams puts the Trappers on the board. It's three to one, Sunfish, as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Trappers cut the lead to two. We'll see how Sioux Falls responds with Dylan Cricket Danielson, followed by Benito Garcia and Tanner Wilson. Hopefully Wilson still in the lineup himself and Kenny Dutka had a hard collision out in left center as a fastball just misses high to Cricket Danielson, who already has a pair of strikeouts looking today. He's had... Four strikeouts in a game twice as he swings through a curveball outside. It's now no balls, two strikes to, or one ball, one strike, excuse me, to Cricket Danielson. The way the strike zone's been going, sometimes you think a pitch might hit or it might miss. You never know. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball hits at the knees on the corner of the plate. And it's now one ball, two strikes. Six hits for Sioux Falls. And for Pierre, you got three of them, including two in that uh, top half of this inning. Cricket Danielson swings through a curve ball. That's three strikeouts on the day. He's just one away from getting his second straight game, striking out four times. Fisher Rausch with his first strikeout of the day. That's his... 10th since joining the Trappers on June 12th. Benito Garcia takes a fastball that misses away and well Trappers head coach Monterio May saying well that looks like that hit the same spot why aren't you calling that a strike to home plate umpire Chad Williams. Here's the 1-0. Grounded left side, Perez plays it in the gut off the hop, fires it over to first, dug out at first by Bramante. Garcia couldn't run that one out. Two up, two down for the Sunfish. Tanner Wilson will be making an appearance at the plate, so the collision didn't harm him too much. We'll see what Dutka does when he comes up. I don't know who took more of the hit. Neither of them fell down. It was just kind of colliding on the run. Again, hopefully, hopefully both of them are okay. Some sunfish have been dropping like flies. Mitch Stroh got a cleat to the hand against Wheat City as a slider misses away. We never did give that medical update 
on Sunday's game. Mitch Stroh, as he was sliding at home, a cleat went through his hand. Slider swung on and missed. Wilson almost hit with the throw back to the pitcher. And, well, he was sent to the emergency room. I think he got it stitched up, and he's here at the game. Curveball misses in the dirt. Not sure what the timetable is for him to return. He was one of the four Augustana boys on the Sunfish team. Here's the pitch. Rolled over by Wilson down the third base line, but it bounces just foul past the glove of Brendan Perez, who was charging in on it. Two balls, two strikes now to Wilson, who's walking all the way back to the plate from first. Wind still blowing sharply out to right field. This time, fans, I am protected in a press box. So hopefully no wind is affecting the audio quality of my microphone. Everything you're hearing, good or bad, is me. Well, actually, if it's good, it's me. If it's bad, I didn't do it, I promise. Two outs, 2-2 two -two count to Wilson. Takes this one high to center field. Coming in is Mast. Who makes the catch? Three up, three down. Six straight retired by Fisher Rausch on the flyout by Wilson. After five from Karis Park, it's Sunfish three, Trappers one. We'll return for the top half of the inning on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube. Top of the lineup, we start off with, with the Trappers. Caden Cardoso, Patrick Connor, and Eric Mast here in the top of the sixth inning. Mitch Stone back on the mound. Six is his season high for innings pitched in one game as a slider misses low and away. Thank you to Linda Burns for, you sound good tonight. Thank you, I'm glad. Fastball swung on and missed this time from Cardoso. We also have, looks like, Carrie Lewis watching from Longmont, Colorado. She's a Trappers fan. Thanks for tuning into the Sunfish live stream and listening to a Sunfish broadcaster. Fastball misses high from Stone. We appreciate your support. And also one other who's been, let's go Sunfish, Sam Schmidt. Let's go Sunfish. Thanks for listening, Sam. Tell us where you're listening from in the YouTube live stream chat or even on Mixler, and you might get a shout-out. The 2-1 fastball looked like it just got away from Stone as it missed far outside to Cardoso. He's ahead three balls, one strike. It's 3-1 Sunfish in the top of the sixth after a couple singles scored a couple runs. Fastball blown by Cardoso for strike two. He swings and misses. And the one run for the Trappers came in the fifth inning off of a leadoff solo home run by Colin Adams. Here's the payoff pitch from Stone to Cardoso. Slider misses just inside as Stone punches the mound. The throwback from Olsen is barehanded by Stone. He's a little frustrated on that one. A leadoff walk issued to Cardoso who had already struck out twice in today's game.
That brings up Patrick Connor, who's flown out twice, takes a slider on the inside corner, but it just misses for a ball. So runner at first, no out. Slider misses outside. Stone again, not. He's starting to get a little bit frustrated with this strike zone. The Trappers were getting frustrated with the bottom half of the fifth inning. Connor's up 2-0. Grounded, left side, past the glove of McClure, into left field for a base hit. First two are aboard for tra the Trappers. That's the first time in this game that two runners have been aboard at the same time, and Walker Bullington's coming out to talk to his pitcher, and that might be it for Mitch Stone. Stone threw six innings twice, both against Wheat City. Walker looks like he's only coming to talk to his pitcher, try and calm him down. As, well, Stone's been showing some attitude. Walker just turns Mitch around as Mitch was kind of not looking at his skipper. And Walker's right in his face. I think he's trying to, I honestly, knowing, what, knowing Walker and knowing Mitch, I think Walker's just telling him to change his attitude. Some body language shown by Stone on some missed calls. It looked like on some of the balls that were borderline that Stone might have thought were strikes, a little flail of the arms, or where did that miss? On the walk, he was frustrated. He punched the ground, a foul right into the dirt, bounced back up into Olsen and might have worn it off the leg, off the bat of Eric Mast. Mast and Williams both walking out to the pitcher's mound. Williams and Stone give each other knuckles. Just as to say, here we go. Let's get this guy. Let's get back in the groove. So Stone had punched the ground, flailed his arms, and then even was kind of giving Norris McClure a little bit of a death glare on that grounder that got by him. It was a tough play. Bit of a reach for McClure and who on the run to his left would have had to reach down on his glove side to get it. Fastball misses away to Mast. It's one ball, one strike. Stone sometimes gets vocal with the teammates in the dugout, and I think that was just the reasoning for Walker's mound visit. Liner, straight over the head of Zeph Hoffpower. It goes into right field. One run's going to score. It rolls off the wall. Here's the throw in from Cricket Danielson. A second run stayed at third. And, well, I think Patrick Connor might have been able to test the arm coming in from the outfield as that kind of rolled into the glove of Will Olson. One run scores off of the RBI double from Eric Mast. And just like that, the Trappers are back within one. Patrick Connor makes it all the way over to third. Eric Mast at second, and with no outs, the tying run is just 90 feet away. The go-ahead is on second for Joey Bramante. First base is open, so no double play ball. Slider hits the inside corner for strike one to Bramante. And Joey Bramante, a bit of a power hitter when he can get a hold of one. He's 0 for 1, lines 1, up the middle. That gets through for a base hit. Scoring from third is Connor, Mast on his way home. The throw bounces past the glove of Olsen to the backstop. Bramante turned and was heading to third. The throw to McClure gets no one as Bramante stays at second. And just like that, a liner right up the middle is an RBI. I think that might be just called a single as Bramante advanced on the throw. Two run score, and just like that, the Trappers take the lead. What I was about to say was Bramante had a double and two home runs against the Sunfish coming into today's game. And well, on the season, he hadn't been hitting, well, all too well overall. It's just against the Sunfish as Colin Adams almost wears a fastball in the head. 
It's one ball, no strikes. It's a 4-3 ball game now in favor of the Trappers. The Sunfish haven't scored since the third. They've had six straight retired off the hand of Fisher Roush. And Mitch Stone in his sixth inning of work has yet to retire one. Slider misses in the dirt away. The Sunfish have won the last three times Stone has pitched. The last two have been against Pierre, and it was those one-run ball games. Here's the 2-0, foul off the end of the bat to the backstop. In the two times that Stone has gone six innings, there is the 3-2 victory against Wheat City before the 4-5 extra inning loss to the Whiskey Jacks a few days prior. Two balls, one strike to Adams, who had a solo home run. Slider misses in the dirt. A spin by Stone shows his frustration. And he has yet to retire one in this inning. We'll see what he can do with Adams. Three straight base hits for the Trappers after a leadoff walk to Cardoso. Here's the 3-1. Slider away. Adams is walked. After not allowing more than one base runner per inning up until this point, Mitch Stone has now allowed the first five in this inning to all reach safely. A leadoff walk to Cardoso, a single by Patrick Connor, a double by Eric Mass, a single by Joey Bramante and a walk by Colin Adams. Slider misses in the dirt to Richie Williams, who is struck out and grounded into a double play thus far. Will Olson is gonna go out to talk to his pitcher. There is motion in the bullpen. It looks like Andalo Santangelo, who's warming up. He's throwing to Cade Kalehu of Ahi, who's not in tonight's lineup. So Bramante, it is being called a single, advanced on the throw. No double for him. It's a 4-3 Trappers lead after they've crossed four in the past two innings. Four unanswered, be it at that. Stone has struck out seven today, hasn't had one since the fifth inning. Fifth inning was the only inning he did not have two in the same inning. The 1 0, fastball, lined into right field. Cricket Danielson going back. He's at the warning track that bounces off the wall. Bramante rounding third. Adams close on his tail. The throw in from Mix is going to be wide right to Olsen. He keeps it in front of him, puts it back into play. This time a no-out double by Richie Williams scores two and the Trappers have blown the lead wide open. The first five reached and all five of them have scored and now Richie Williams stands on second with a double. No one is out. Walker Bullington calls time and is walking to the pitcher's mound. He calls to the bullpen for Santangelo and that'll be it for Mitch Stone. Stone night, Stone's night ends after five innings pitched. He couldn't even retire one in the sixth. Six earned runs off of seven hits, three walks, and seven strikeouts, a strikeout shy of his season high. We'll get you the information on Santangelo, who inherits a runner on second with no outs in the top of the sixth inning when we return on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream on YouTube.
Brendan Perez will be the first batter that Andalo Santangelo will face. He asks for the signs again quickly from Will Olson as a fastball is driven high to center field. Drifting back as Dutka catches it on the run, throws it off the crow hop to the tagging runner, but that's going to be wide left of third base as Richie Williams gets in on the tag on the sack fly by Brendan Perez. Bennett Osborne, who's 0 for 2 on the day, steps up after six, five, excuse me, have already crossed in this inning. Six have reached the first six of the inning. That's the first out of this sixth inning. Mitch Stone, five innings pitch, six runs, seven hits, seven strikeouts, just three walks. He's relieved by Santangelo. We'll get his stats in just a moment. He throws a slider to Osborne to lead it off. Santangelo in four games has made one start, has 10 innings under his belt with 17 hits allowed, 14 runs, six walks, 10 strikeouts. Osborne follows one off the end of the bat into the back netting, and this time it is netting. We talked about in Carroll, Iowa, it was more of a chicken wire. I think that's what it's called, if I'm not mistaken. And it was just metal. And when the ball went into it, it just made a loud thud and just died. No ricochet back or anything. Not that the netting sends anything back. The 1-1 one -one fastball just a bit overthrown by Santangelo. Misses at the ankles. Two balls, one strike to Bennett Osborne. It is a curveball misses inside. It's now three balls, one strike. We have Sam from Mobile, Alabama, giving me a shout out in the YouTube chat. Davey Broadcasts. Thank you, Sam. The wife of Walker Bullington. Three balls, one strike. Fastball. Blown by Osborne for strike two. With one out, a runner at third. It's six to three trappers after they've scored five here in the top of the sixth inning. Carolyn Williams is watching from Wyoming. Grounder left side. Garcia makes the stab, throws it home. The tag applied. He's out. Richie Williams got aggressive on the ground ball straight to Garcia. Heads up play there by Benito, who got Richie Williams trying to swipe home to score the sixth run of the sixth inning. So Osborne reaches on the 6-2 fielder's choice. And two outs. There's a runner on first for Brayden Cordes. The Trappers have gone through their lineup. They're at, they started with... Their leadoff man, the number one in the order, Caden Cardoso, and are, have already made it all the way down to their number nine hitter. Fastball grounded sharply to Garcia. He looked to throw to second, pump faked, and threw it to first for out number three instead. Five runs cross in the sixth inning as the Trappers not only take the lead, but they take a three-run lead. It's 6-3 after the top of the sixth inning we'll see how the sunfish respond when we return here from karis park
JT Mix is the one to get it started here from his home park of Karras Park, home of Rock and Field on the campus of Augustana University. Fisher Rausch throws a slider that misses low for ball one to mix. JT has a single and a walk. He's been left stranded both times. As he rolls over one to third base, Perez per plays it off the hop, the throw over to first to a stretching Bramante, retires mix. That's seven in a row since Roush has come in. He relieved Jared Shelton in the fourth inning. Shelton allowed the three runs for the Sunfish through the first three innings before being taken out. And, well, Roush has come in and cleaned house. Declan Beers, who has switched up his bat, takes a fastball at the knees. Beard ha Beard Beers, excuse me, had his custom teal bat this time a curveball misses low it's 1-1 one, one. I don't know if it broke or if he's just trying to switch up his mojo even though he's been doing well he lines this one into left field left center field coming over all the way is Eric Mast who was playing to the first base side expecting a pull beers poked that one He's not had a hit today, just two walks on the fly out to center field. It's now, well, eight straight retired since Roush has come in. Kenny Dutka takes a first pitch, swinging into the back left netting for strike one. Dutka. Has a single and was hit by a pitch after, and then flew out to third. Had an at-bat in the first three innings. Hasn't hit since until now. Takes this one sharply into left center field. Coming to his right is Osborne. Three up, three down for the third straight inning. Roush gives a little bit of a s subtle fist pump as he heads back to the Trapper dugout. He's welcomed with high fives and knuckles by his teammates. And he deserves it. Nine up, nine down through three innings of work for Roush. The Trappers still lead by three as we head to the top of the seventh inning. Caden Cardoso leads off the top of the seventh. He also led off the top of the sixth, and that was the inning that the Trappers would get their first six on and five would score. It's a 6-3 ball game as Santangelo, who came in, faced two batters in that sixth inning, gets his first pitch fouled off over the football complex out of play. Santangelo before the game. So you might notice, especially if you've been listening to me all season, when a pitcher comes in, it's usually my job to, hey, let's, you know, you tell the fans what they want to hear, how they've been pitching all season. Fastball misses away. 
And so when they come in, you know, you read off how many innings they've pitched and how many games, how many strikeouts, walks, and, well, unfortunately, how many runs and even that ERA. Well, D'Lo, he, he's had a couple outings that have brought some of those up. Fastball hits at the knees across the plate. It's one ball, two strikes to Cardoso. And he was telling me from the game, he's like, hey, David, why do you have to do me bad like that? I was like, what do you mean? It's like, you didn't have to read off all my stats. And I'm just like, well, it's my job. And we kind of got a good laugh out of it. And he's been doing well today. The one, two, curveball, swung on and missed. That's his strikeout number one, eighth of the day for Sunfish Pitching. That's the third time Cardoso has struck out today. His only other at bat was a walk, which he scored in that sixth inning. Patrick Connor, he was 0 for 2 going into the sixth before his single got him on and later scored. Fastball misses high and inside for ball one. The wind's still blowing out. Not many people have really taken advantage of it. Colin Adams really the only one with his home run hit over the right center field wall. Another fastball misses high. It's two balls, no strikes to Connor. Here's the 2-0. Fastball inside, and Connor's up. Three balls, no strikes. Seven hits for the Trappers, six for the Sunfish. It's still a three run ball game Santangelo always throws from the stretch and here he deals slider misses away Olsen can't pull that one back in for the frame and with one out Connor draws a walk Eric Mast had that big RBI double in the sixth most of the Trappers had gone 0 for 2 before that sixth inning, especially out of the first five. Cardoso, Connor, and Mast each had gone 0 for 2. Bramante had gone 0 for 1 with a walk. Adams, number five hitter, as Mast swings on a curveball. Adams had flew out but then had the home run. He was the only one who went 1 for 2. Otherwise, even the bottom of the order, a lot of them had gone either 1 for 2 or 0 for 2. But still, the first five scored. Swing and a miss on a fastball. It's two strikes to Eric Mast, who's already struck out twice today as well. The Sunfish, well, I don't want to say, like, they... Struggle early, they struggle in the middle, and they struggle at the end. And usually it's the last three innings is where their offense starts to pick it up a little bit. Runner goes. Throw down from Olsen just to the left. The tag by Garcia doesn't get him. Olsen's throw was sliding a bit to the left of second base. Garcia had to bring it across his body to make the tag. It was a bang-bang play, but... Connor swipes the bag. One ball, two strikes from Santangelo. Sun beginning to set, and a couple fans, I think, getting just a bit chilly. As the wind's still blowing, the sun set. Curveball gets him to swing, drop third strike. Tag not applied. Olsen was chasing him, ends up having to throw it down to Zaf Hoffpower. Strikeout number two of the inning for Santangelo, ninth of the day for Sunfish Pitching. The Sunfish hold the five to four series lead against Pier. Next week marks the last time that the two teams will play each other. Time is called. I think there's just some confusion again with the signs. It's 12 times in the month of June, 14 times overall on the season. I probably should make that clear. I've just been saying 12 times so far. I forget that it's 14 times on the season. 
So after today, the Trappers and Sunfish have game two of this two-game series in Sioux Falls, 6.35 tomorrow night, before a one-game series in Pier on Thursday with a 7.05 first pitch. And that just doesn't make any sense to me as to why the Sunfish have to travel the three and a half hours to Pier just to come back and have a three-game homestand over the weekend. Breaking ball misses low and away for ball one to Joey Bramante. That's how it's been all season. Even starting off on the fourth, a home game on the fourth before three in Pier the next three days. This one drilled hard in the right field. Cricket Danielson plays it, almost went over his head. He was running in, but made a little goalie save and made the catch over his head. One runner is stranded. No one crosses here in the seventh inning on the line out to right field. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. It's the first time that the Trappers have gone scoreless since the fourth inning. It's still a three-run ball game, and it's stretching time from Karis Park. Fisher Rausch, who has retired nine straight through three innings, comes back in for his fourth inning of work after relieving Jared Shelton. Shelton allowed the only three runs for the Sunfish on the day. Rausch has taken over since then. He deals with Will Olson first, who takes the first pitch into the back netting. Olson. The best hitter on this Sunfish team had a single all the way back in the first before striking out in the second and grounding out in the fourth. He takes a curveball low and away. 77 on the radar gun. That's right, fans. The radar gun's working. We were having trouble with it and just randomly it decided to work here in the seventh inning. Where was it the first couple innings? Who knows? Maybe it just was being mean and didn't want to work. The 1-1. One -one. This time, another curveball. One ball, two strikes from Rausch. He came in in the fourth, forced a ground out, two fly outs, had one strikeout in the fifth. As a slider misses low and away, it's two balls, two strikes. Only one strikeout through three innings of work for Rausch. Sunfish haven't been striking out all too much today. Time is called by Olsen. That's on the day, Sunfish have one, two, three, four, five strikeouts. This one, a high pitch, popped underneath by Olsen. That goes out of play. Curveball that just didn't curve all too much. And the wind blowing to right isn't too beneficial for Olsen. Here's the 2-2. Slider. Actually, has a fastball, excuse me. That's the nice thing about having the radar gun again. It missed low and away. It looked like it had some curve on it. But with the 88 on the radar gun, well, that's a fastball. This time, a curveball misses low and away. And that's the first 
Banner not retired by Fisher Roush. I didn't want to use the, the word, even though, you know, I am the opposing team broadcaster, so maybe I should have used the word a little bit earlier, but Roush was perfect through three innings. And while, you know, it means nothing if you come in in the fourth and go to the ninth and you're perfect through six innings, it means nothing, but, hey, it's still a cool accomplishment, but he's perfect no more. Olsen's on first. Here's Zeff Hoff Power. Takes a fastball on the outside corner. Hoff Power, one for three with a single in the first. For flying out twice in his last two appearances. Olsen's secondary lead, a foul to the backstop from Hoff Power on the fastball. Minus the last three innings where Roush was perfect. The Sunfish left eight stranded through three innings. And even if you just cross a couple of those, if you, even if you cross three to make it a tie ball game at 6-6, six, six, which is only 6-3, curveball foul tip by Hoffpower goes down swinging for the second strikeout by Roush on the day, first out in the seventh inning. Even if you take those, you put three, Runs across out of those eight left stranded. That's still five left stranded through three innings, which is still not a number you want to be at. Pickoff attempt at first, no tag by Bramante. Norris McClure at the plate. He singled and scored in the third. He's one for three as well on the day. Slow curve, 79 on the radar gun. Hits at the chest on the outside part of the plate for strike one. In the bottom of the seventh inning, we'll take a quick trip around the Expedition League. Fastball misses high. In the bottom of the third inning from Casper, Wyoming, the Canyon County Spuds lead the Casper Horseheads eight to one. The Mining City Tommyknockers trail the Western Nebraska Pioneers. Curveball misses away. It's two balls, one strike to McClure. 4-0 Pioneers in the bottom of the fourth from Oregon Trail Park Stadium. And the Badlands Big Sticks lead the Spearfish Sasquatch from Spearfish 3-2. The 2-1 popped underneath over the back netting, over the press box, out of play. It's an even 2-2 count. And there's just nine games remaining, including today. Well, nine days remaining before the... Halfway point of the season, a 64-game Expedition League season split into two 32-game halves. There goes Olsen to second. Curveball misses high. Throw from Adams just in front of second. Olsen slides a bit through as he ends up sitting on second but is safe on the stolen base. A runner in scoring position for Sioux Falls with a full count to Norris McClure with one out. That's the first base runner. Since the seventh inning and the first runner on second since the third inning, or actually, for, excuse me, first base runner and runner on second since the third inning. Right now it's the bottom of the seventh inning. McClure takes a fastball low and away for the one-out walk, and two runners are aboard off of walks, and it's Dylan Cricket Danielson, who's 0 for 3 with strikeouts. Cricket Danielson, has, it's not been his day. He struck out twice looking to Jared Shelton, two out of the four for Shelton, and, well, he's one out of the two for Fisher Roush. First pitch, a fastball away. Good eye there by Cricket Danielson, who really likes the outside pitches when he swings. Runners at first and second. Cricket Danielson marking the tying run at the plate. He has yet to hit the long ball. Did have a nice RBI double against Wheat City on Sunday. Roush checks back at second, delivers to Danielson, who swings through a curveball. But with nine games remaining in the first half of the season, the way it's looking, well, there's a battle for the... Top of the Clark Division. 
Spearfish and Fremont are each tied at 16 and 6 record. Western Nebraska leads the Clark with an 18 and 5. Another curveball swung on and missed by Cricket Danielson. He's down 1 2. Sioux Falls, a whopping seven and a half games behind and really would have to win out the rest of this half of the season to even have a chance. And well, even with that, they'd have to have the top three teams lose. Slider misses low and away. Good take by Cricket Danielson. Chad Williams stepped to the right and made a point somewhere don't know what that was about it's a 2-2 count to cricket danielson with runners at first and second one away curveball high good take again there by dylan it's a full count and in the lewis division the sewers valley saber dogs who were starting to fall behind the mining city tommy knockers now hold a two-game lead over Mining City after taking six straight after losing two of the three to Sioux Falls. Here's the payoff pitch. Curveball, or slider, excuse me, low and away. And a walk breaks the strikeout streak for Cricket Danielson. After going perfect through three, Fisher Roush has now walked the bases loaded and Nolan Sommerfeld comes out to talk to the pitcher on the mound, Roush. It's 6-3 to three Trappers in the bottom of the seventh inning. How did we get here? Well, the Sunfish were attacking early. Six hits through three innings, including three runs. They had a three-run lead after the third inning. Both teams went scoreless in the fourth. The Trappers would score their first run of the game off of a solo home run by Colin Adams in the fifth. And it wasn't until the sixth inning where the first six would reach for Pierre, five of them would score, and they would take the three-run lead that they have not surrendered. Fisher Roush came in and went three perfect before this bottom of the seventh where he's only struck out Zeph Offbauer but has walked. Will Olson, who's now on third, Norris McClure, who's on second, and now Dylan Cricket Danielson at first. Benito Garcia swings through a curveball. And Roush has really been utilizing that breaking pitch. Hasn't gone to a slider all too much. And only the fastball when he's ahead. Here's the 0-1 to Garcia. Fastball misses low and away. But so with nine games in the first half of the season remaining, 10 for the Sunfish, there might be for some other teams as well. There's just nine days until the halfway point. The Tommy Knockers are just two games behind, and, well, they're losing right now. Here's the 1-1. Curveball in the dirt. Stop sign put up by Garcia to keep Olsen at third. The Badlands Big Sticks are just five games behind. They're currently on a four-game winning streak after sweeping the Fremont Moo. They're at 500 at 11 and 11. Wheat City, Casper, and Canyon County all under 500 are kind of in similar situations to Sioux Falls. They really just don't stand a chance. They'd have to basically win out. The 2-1. Slider away. It's three balls, one strike to Garcia. Same with the Trappers and Hastings. They're at 6 and 15 for Pierce, 6 and 16 for the Sodbusters. Both are basically just math. They're actually, I think, mathematically eliminated. Slider swung on and missed by Garcia. He chased on the 3 1. That was low and away. Brings the count to full with the bases loaded. Cricket Danielson at first, McClure on second, Olsen at third. Oh, here's the payoff pitch. Garcia grounds one, stabbed by Roush, who fires it back home. The throw over to first, Garcia slides, not in time. 
A grounder right back to the glove of Fisher Roush. He stabbed it out of the air. Garcia safe at first. All other runners advance. Olsen's thrown out at home. Ontario May comes out and talks to Alex Shoemaker in the field, who's now meeting with Chad Williams about something. I'm not sure what they saw that I didn't. They are calling them safe. I think they were just trying to talk at first what uh, if Garcia was safe or not. I think I just saw Joey Bramante give a thumbs up to his to the umpire Alex Shoemaker and his buddy at second base Braden Cordes saying, "No, that's the right call." I think May just wanted to see, like, eh, maybe you should just check just to see. Tanner Wilson marks the go-ahead run for Sioux Falls. The tying run on first in Benito Garcia with two outs in the bottom of the seventh. Wilson sings through a high fastball for strike one. Wilson one for two with a single and a walk. He scored in the second inning. The first run scored for the Sunfish. The 0-1. Curveball low. And again, it... Sioux Falls was first in walks, hit by pitches. They had the seventh most strikeouts, so bottom half of the Expedition League. Second in stolen bases as a fastball hits at the knees. It's now 1-2 to Wilson. Third and on base percentage. And yet against a Trappers pitching staff that has allowed the fourth most runs and fourth most walks, they really haven't reached much today. They retired three to perfect in through three innings as a slider misses low and away. Good stop by Adams. And it's just when they do reach the sunfish it's the reaching base that's a little it's pretty easy for them it's the scoring that well that's where they struggle with especially the bases loaded the 2-2 curveball didn't break much and missed high in the zone it's now a full count with two away runners will be off on the pitch Wilson We'll take the payoff pitch now from Roush. There goes the runners. Fastball, got him looking on the outside corner. It's been called a strike all night. Wilson watched it blow by, 88 on the radar gun. The bases are left loaded for the third time today. And the Sunfish can't even cross one in the seventh inning. It's no runs off, no hits, no errors. Three left on base for Sioux Falls. They still trail by three as we head to the eighth from Karis Park. Andalo Santangelo returns again on the mound after relieving Mitch Stone. Colin Adams had a solo home run early in the game. 
Got the scoring going for the Trappers as a curveball hits at the knees to Adams. He homered and walked in the sixth. He scored twice more than anybody else on this Trappers team tonight. Drills one down the left field line. He pulled it. That's going to roll to the warning track. Wilson's hat falls off as he fires one into second. JT Mix makes the grab right on second base on the hose of a throw by Tanner Wilson, but a hard hit single for Colin Adams gets things started in the eighth. Wow, for how hard and far that was hit. Adams just turned on it, pulled it down the left field line. And it should have been a, I think it could have been a double for really, well, I wouldn't want to say anyone else, but I don't know if that was based on the throw or just based on Adams didn't trust his speed as a slider misses low and away. Either way, no outs. Runner at first for Richie Williams, who doubled, scored two in his last at bat. Chopper up the middle. Garcia flips it to Mix for out number one. Mix can't make a clean turn on the hard slide by Adams. Mix has a few choice words for the Trappers catcher. Adams smiling and chirping on his way back to the dugout. Looked like a pretty late slide by the Trapper catcher on the 6-4 fielder's choice. So Williams reaches first for Brendan Perez, who's flown out twice but had a single in the fifth. Trappers still lead by three. Santangelo pickoff attempt at first, very late. The throw was kind of low, so Hoffpower just made a, a small tag. No one warming in the Sunfish bullpen, and it looks like Walker Bullington might stick with just the two-pitcher approach again, as Santangelo's been doing pretty well for himself. Inside pitch, slow roller up the first base line, but it's rolling foul into the glove of Zaf Hoffpower for strike one. It was a curveball inside, and... Perez was a bit late on it, and I think since it jammed him, it just kind of bounced and started rolling up the first base line. Sunfish pitching really likes to take advantage of the two-pitcher approach. I don't think they've really had more than three pitchers in a game pick off attempt at first. They haven't had more than three pitchers in a game all too often. Only had two to, two yesterday in game two, three in game one. Austin Oblast just came in for one inning of closure. Skyrocketed off the bat of Perez. Charging in are McClure and Hoffpower. Hoffpower makes the last call from first as the two corners were running in. Two of the youngest guys on the team in Hoff Power and McClure. Two outs now in the top of the eighth inning off the fly out by Perez. And the funny thing is that was about, I'd say a foot and a half diagonally up the first base line from home plate. Should have been an easy catch for Olsen, but since the corners were coming in, they have jurisdiction over the catcher. Ben and Osborne Steps up. He grounded into a fielder's choice. He's almost hit on a fastball inside. Brushed back a little bit. Saturday's game, the Sunfish only had two pitchers. Thursday, two as well. It wasn't until back on Wednesday that they utilized the three again. Fastball misses away. It's two balls, no strikes to Bennett Osborne. Let's flip through the notes. I'm going to see when, if ever, Sunfish have used four pitchers in a game. Here's the pitch. A little pop-up over the netting, over the press box, out of play for strike one. Three pitchers. 
Four pitchers all the way back on Saturday, June 11th against the Trappers in the, or excuse me, against the Sewers Valley Sabredogs. I saw Griffin Hassel start. I just assumed it was against the Trappers. Here's the 2-1. Fastball misses low and away. It's now 3-1 to Osborne. The runner at first, Richie Williams, getting a very strong secondary lead on some pitches. But it was that 18 to 13 game. So yeah, the Sunfish went through a lot of pitchers. This one high and deep to left. Wilson at the warning track almost slips and falls and makes the catch about a foot over the ground. He was bending low, would have gotten under a limbo bar. He makes the catch just above the ground, doesn't let it drop far down the left field line. A runner left stranded after no runs cross off one hit, no errors for the Sunfish. The Trappers still lead by three as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Fisher Rausch's night is done. After four innings pitched, he allowed no hits and no runs. And aside from the three walks, he, well, didn't allow a base runner. He walked the three in the seventh inning and let someone, Benito Garcia, reach on the fielder's choice on the force out at home. Other than that, he struck out three and had a pretty solid night. And it's Tyler Lubin who hasn't made an appearance since June 9th, throws sidearm, submariner, has a pitch to JT Mix, who fouls it to the back netting. Lubin has not allowed a run this season through five appearances. He was having some arm troubles. Again, a submariner. Mix skyrockets this one to shallow right field. Cordes calls off Cardoso, who in turns... Calls off Cordis to make the grab for out number one. But in five appearances, eight and two-thirds innings, six strikeouts, three walks, five hits. Those two-thirds coming in the five to four Trappers win on June 9th. He allowed no hits with one strikeout and three batters faced. No walks either. There's a changeup, misses at the outside corner. Beers back to his teal bat. Gonna have to ask him after the game why he went with the switch. Beers 0 for 2 with two walks today. The 1 0. Another breaking ball on the outside corner. With the release point, Luban a, a righty. He starts with his glove extended straight out, brings it 
just at his waist and then bends over and throws from the side. Beers fire, fouls one to the back netting. A very low release point. It's hard to see what the pitch really does as it you know, starts low, doesn't really get high. And all of them have been around 76. I'm not going to, I mean, it might be his fastball. There is one drilled right back up the middle into center field, and it was dropping quickly. Eric Mast recovered for out number two. Mast thought that was carrying further than it was, and it started to drop quickly off the bat of Beers. And Mast made a grab similar to that of Tanner Wilson's to end the seventh inning. Sunfish have been scoreless since the third, and it's roughly around this eighth inning that they usually end up tacking on a run or two to at least make it close. Here's Kenny Dutka. Takes a slider inside. That one I know because it started in the right-handed batter's box chalk line, finished inside on Dutka, who's a lefty, on his chalk line. The 1-0 swung on and missed. I'm going to call it his fastball because it doesn't move all too much. And his pitches, Lubins, have really peaked at that 75. Eight hits for the Trappers, six for the Sunfish. As a curveball misses outside, Lubin was, he's kind of hopping on his foot. I don't know if that was due to injury or he was just a little upset that that one got away from him. He knew he released that a little bit outside. Either way, 2-1 to Dutka. His family's sitting in the front row, right behind home plate. Swung on a fastball. It's deuces wild. This will be, time is called by Dutka. This will be back-to-back -back losses if the Sunfish can't come back. And it'll end the 10-game losing streak for the Trappers, the 2-2. Dutka gets it off the end of the bat to the left side netting. Starts rolling back and hits the dirt up the third base line. Kenny stays alive off that one. He's good at battling back and counts. And he's looking to keep this inning alive for his catcher, Will Olsen, in the on deck circle. That slider coming in on Kenny. Fouled to the backstop. It's now 2-2. Two -two. If Dutka can get on, it's Will Olson, Zeph Offbauer, and Norris McClure. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Grounded. Up the middle. Into the diving glove of Cordes, who gets up and fires as he's fallen to his backside. Can't make the throw. It would have been a tough one and a spectacular one if he beat out Dutka. But a nice diving stop to prevent that one from going into the outfield on the diving glove by Cordes. And Dutka gets his second hit of the game on a grounder up the middle. Just going over to Point Street to confirm, yes, that is a single. It's Will Olson who walked and was... A victim of a fielder's choice at home on the force out. Pickoff attempt, no tag at first. Sunfish have left the bases loaded three times this game for a total of 11 left stranded, two in the first inning. Slider misses away. It's two balls, no strikes to the catcher Olsen. He's singled all the way back in the first. The tying run in the on-deck circle in the form of Zeph Hoffpower. Norris McClure still in the dugout. He's the go-ahead. Pickoff attempt. Dutka with the late dive back. The tag by Bramante gets him caught. So Kenny Dutka is caught on the base pass. He had a very late dive back on the pickoff move by Tyler Lubin. And... Three batters faced, all three retired off of one hit, no errors, no one left on base here in the eighth. We're headed to the top of the ninth inning. The Trappers still lead by three.
Angelo Santangelo. He's going to close this one out or at least attempt to for the Sioux Falls Sunfish. A foul off the bat of Bennett Osborne gets this one kicked off. Or excuse me, Braden Cordes is leading this one off. I forgot to mark how Bennett Osborne was retired. He flew out to left field. I was just so entranced by Wilson's catch down the left field line. A curveball almost hits Braden Cordes, who leads off the ninth inning. Cordes had a double in the third, but was left stranded all the way out there. The Trappers have not stranded more than one runner on in this game. The 1-1. One -one. Grounded into the Trappers' dugout, into the hands of the third base coach for Pierre. It's now a 1-2 count to Cordes, who had the nice diving grab at second. Here's the 1-2. Swung on and miss. Actually, a foul tip, it's called. Either way, a strikeout for Santangelo as Cordes couldn't get the curveball. A strikeout to lead off the ninth inning. That's the third one of the day for Santangelo. Tenth for the Sunfish. Back to the top of the order we go. Caden Cardoso is responsible for three of the ten. Eric Mast. Another three. He's up next. Or actually, he's after Patrick Connor. Curveball misses inside to the lefty Cardoso. Sunfish let the Trappers score six unanswered in the fifth and sixth inning. Foul off the end of the bat goes out of play on the fastball from Santangelo. Sunfish haven't crossed one since the third inning. In both the second and third innings, they left the bases loaded. We're only able to score one in the second, two in the third. And Sioux Falls left the bases loaded again in the seventh after a curveball. They swung on and missed by Cardoso. Correction, our scoreboard got it wrong. It's two balls, one strike. It was just a check swing. D'Lo has gone three and a third, allowing just one hit, one walk. Has struck out three thus far without letting a run across in his innings of work. Fastball misses away. Olsen able to get the glove on it. It's now three balls and one strike. Here's the 3-1. Liner into the glove of JT Mix at second. 90 mile an hour on that fastball from Andalo Santangelo. I've been saying it right all game. It's Andalo, excuse me. And there are now two away on the line out to JT Mix at second. Cardoso avoids the golden sombrero. He just is most likely going to end his day with just the three strikeouts. Patrick Connor grounds one up the middle off the pitcher's mound past the glove of a sliding Benito Garcia into center field for a two out base hit. 87 on the fastball. That marks hit number nine for the Trappers today. And Connor reaches for the third straight time in today's contest. Now Eric Mast, who himself is in a in the danger of a golden sombrero. Granted, golden sombrero means four strikeouts in one game. Curveball hits at the knees to Mast, the lefty. He's got the cheek protector on his helmet. And something I haven't really noticed before. You don't see that much this season in the Expedition League. I think the Trappers are one of the few teams 
really utilize that cheek protector. Here's the 0-1. Swung on a curveball in the dirt for strike two. And Mast down no balls, two strikes, two outs. The Trappers still lead by three here in the top of the ninth. Still some light in the sky. The sun has gone down behind the trees, but the lights are on at Karis Park. And we might end this one while the, the sky is still a bit lit. Here's the 0-2. Curveball misses low and in. Here's the one two now from Santangelo. Line into left field. Tanner Wilson at the line makes the grab on the run. Back to back batters. Avoid the golden sombrero. No runs off one hit, no errors. One left stranded. And that marks the fifth straight inning that the Trappers have left a runner stranded. It's a three run ball game. The Sunfish are down to their last three outs in the bottom. Can they come back? We'll see. Clay Odenbach comes in for the Trappers to try and close this one out. I had been told under good authority that, well, Odenbach was not able to pitch. I was told that by the Trappers broadcaster. I'll have to have a talk with him after the game. Now, Tyler's a good guy. And I think Odenbach might still be, actually be hurt, but we'll see if he can get through one as he blows a curveball by Will Olson for strike one. Odenbach out of South Dakota State University in his four appearances has gone three of them against the Sioux Falls Sunfish. A fastball gets away from Adams behind the plate. It's now 1-1. One, one. A lefty out of Thompson, North Dakota. In three games against the Sunfish, he's pitched four innings of closing baseball, allowed three runs in his most recent on the 17th. Here's the 1-1. A curveball bounces in the dirt away from Adams. It's now 2-1 to Olsen. One hit, two walks, two strikeouts, and 10 batters face in the 9-3 loss on the 17th. 
And here's the 2 1. Fastball high. And well, three runs in the last time. That's all the Sunfish need right now to tie it up in the bottom of the ninth. They trail 6 to 3. Here's the 3 1 to Olsen. Bounces in the dirt, gets high and away from Adams. He lost it and now bounces and is starting to roll to the backstop. Will Olsen was just trotting down to first. I don't think in any way, shape, or form he was even considering trying to risk going to second. Zeph Hoffpower, one for four on the day, now has his leadoff man at first. And the tying run is in the on deck circle if Hoffpower can reach. The Sunfish all season have struggled against the lefty pitcher. And Odenbach, who throws a change up away, has struggled thus far. And what I had been told by the Trappers broadcaster in his game notes that he sent me was that Odenbach was dealing with a shoulder injury. Here's the 1-0. Fastball right down the middle, swung on and missed by Zeff. It's an even 1-1 count. And while the breaking ball hasn't been hitting as much, that fastball was right down the middle. Not much velocity. Odenbach tosses it over to first. Odenbach, 6'7", just finished up his freshman season at SDSU. And, well, I don't know if that injury occurred during this season or during the Jackrabbits. I change up. Outside gets the half swing from Hoffpower, who gets a piece of it to the backstop. It's He's now down one ball, two strikes. Sunfish got a hit in the eighth off the bat of Kenny Dutka. That was their first since the third inning. They have seven on the day. Here's the one-two. Fastball high. 79 on the radar gun, so you can see that the velocity is just not there for Odenbach, so he might be dealing with that shoulder injury as well. When you put in a closer, usually you got that velocity behind it. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. Foul tip, actually, off of the changeup by Odenbach, and there's one away now in the ninth inning. It's the second strikeout of the day for Hoffpower. And Norris McClure, who has singled and walked in his two times up, looks to try and get a rally started for this Sunfish team who's down by three. Curveball misses high above the head of McClure. Looked like that might have just slipped out of Clay's hand. It's a lefty-lefty matchup. And it was McClure against the Trappers where he got his two home runs, the monstrous one coming in pier. Takes this one high to right center, coming over his mast, and he makes the catch. Hard hit ball just on the end of the barrel of McClure. And it's now down to Dylan Cricket Danielson. He's 0 for 3 with a walk and three strikeouts. With two outs away, a runner on first. Here's the first pitch. Cricket Danielson swings through a fastball. Just around the neck area, right down the plate. It's 79 on the radar. No one. Odenbach sets and delivers. Fastball misses inside. Almost hits Cricket Danielson at the knees. And even 1-1 one, one count. Will Olsen at first. Hasn't even looked like he's been trying to steal. Change up misses away.
Trappers lead by three. Benito Garcia in the on-deck circle would mark the tying run. Here's the 2-1 to Cricket Danielson. He drills this one hard. Down the left field line and deep. That just hooks foul. Cricket Danielson just got a piece of that one, and he really pulled that one hard down the left field line. It didn't look like it was high enough to clear the wall. Would have been just hard off the wall. Olsen might have made it all the way down to third. So not sure if anyone would have scored, but man, he just hooked that one foul. The 2-2 two -two got a piece of it out of play. Six runs off nine hits for the Trappers. Three runs off seven for the Sunfish. The defenses have been perfect today. Here's the 2-2 from Odenbach. Cricket Danielson fouls that one off. 80 on the fastball. It's the fastest pitch thrown by Clay Odenbach today. Cricket Danielson taking his time, inspecting his bat. He's working at his pace, making Odenbach wait. Clay sets, looks over at first, and delivers. Foul into the back netting. Cricket Danielson not going to be caught looking. He struck out twice while looking at the pitch today. His third strikeout coming off the swing. He chased a breaking ball low and away. And Odenbach's really been attacking with that fastball when Cricket Danielson really struggles with the breaking stuff. Here's the 2-2 again. This time a fastball misses just below the ankles. No swing by Danielson that time. It's now a full count. Joey Bermonti no longer covering at first. Will Olsen is free to head to second whenever he so pleases. Here's the payoff. Misses away. He lost him. And a great at bat by Dylan Cricket Danielson. Had two strikes for the majority of it. Battled off a couple pitches. He even had a hard hit one down the line. Hit off the wall just to the left of the 320 sign, just foul. And ends up drawing the walk. Really raises the pitch count for Odenbach for Benito Garcia. Odenbach now, Odenbach, excuse me, now had 21 pitches. He's facing Benito Garcia, who reached on that fielder's choice. That was the force out that got Olsen at home and the seventh inning, Garcia takes a change up at the knees for strike one. Benito has not gotten a hit yet today. Just the fielder's choice and a walk in the third, otherwise a strikeout and a ground out. He marks the tying run. Here's the 0-1. Skyrocketed to center field. It looks like Mass lost it. It's now dropping, and that drops in center field. He lost it. One run will score. Here's Cricket Danielson, and Eric Mast had absolutely no idea where the ball was. The lights are on here at Karras Park, and the E8 will score two for Sioux Falls, and the Sunfish have life here in the ninth inning. Garcia's in scoring position. He marks... The tying run, Tanner Wilson, is the go-ahead at the plate. Wilson walked in the second, scored, singled in the third, was stranded at third, and has been retired the last two times 
His previous at bat, he struck out looking. Time is called as Odenbach calls for his catcher to come and talk to him. It's back to that dreaded one run ball game. These two teams are even when it comes to just one run. Two wins for the Sunfish, two wins for the Trappers. If the Trappers win this one, they snap their 10 game losing streak and also tie up the season series. It's the 10th matchup between Pierre and Sioux Falls. The Sunfish have won four straight against Pier. Here's the first pitch to Wilson. A fastball on the outside corner. The one thing a lot of the Sunfish hitters have been telling me is the one thing they don't like about Trapper pitching is, well, it's not too fast. Wilson calls time. There have been some starters and even a lot of relievers for Pierre who, well, they throw in the 60s and even some of their fastballs are just hitting the high 70s. Odenbach has hit 80 just a few times. Here's the pitch to Wilson. Swings through a fastball, high and away. And Wilson down to his last strike. Garcia popped one high to center field. Eric Mast lost it. They're actually, wow, they're not giving that an error. They're calling that a double. I thought he lost it in the lights. Should have been an easy play. So a double by Benito Garcia crosses two. Here's the 0-2. Got him looking. Pitch on the inside corner. Three pitches, three strikes to Wilson. He's arguing with Chad Williams, who's immediately walking over to Walker Bullington. They actually aren't going to talk. Walker points to the duck out as Wilson flips his bat. And the Sunfish drop one to the Trappers. Their 10-game losing streak is over. They beat the Sunfish. And even the se series season, season series, there we go. Easy for me to say, at Five games to five. It's a 6-5 ball game. The Sunfish let the Trappers score six unanswered in the fifth and sixth innings before crossing two on a double by Benito Garcia here in the ninth. But that's all it could be. The, Sun, the Trappers also take the lead in one-run ball games. They have now won three out of the five against the Sunfish just by one run. The Sunfish are going to drop their second in a row and fall to 10 and 13, while the Trappers get their first win in 10 games and improve to 7 and 15. Both teams stay stagnant in the Clark Division standings, and we'll quick take a look at the scoreboard across the league to see how everyone else is doing. The Canyon County Spuds take the lead or hold the lead against the Casper Horseheads 8 to 4. The Mining City Tommyknockers are even more in a deficit, even though they scored one. From Oregon Trail Park Stadium, the Pioneers lead the Tommyknockers 7-1. The Badlands Big Sticks continue their hot streak. They hold a three-run lead over the Spearfish Sasquatch in the top of the seventh. Final pitch today, by the way, 9-27. And so that'll be two hours. Oh, gosh. That's two hours and 51 minutes. Look at that, did that off the top of my head. And so that's the trip around the Expedition League. The Sunfish falls six to five to the Trappers. Tomorrow night, the two teams do battle once more for the 11th time this season, all in the month of June. First pitch will be at 635 live from Karis Park. We'll see you tomorrow on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream. Once again, 635 first pitch tomorrow. Tonight's game, six to five Trappers. Six runs off, five hits, no errors for the Pier Trappers. They left one, two, three, four, five, six left on base with their six runs, nine hits, and no errors. The Sunfish, five runs off, seven hits, 
No errors. I'm scared to look how many they left on base. Three, six, nine, ten, twelve left on base. They left the bases loaded to end an inning three times. The Trappers beat the Sunfish by one run. This is David Coyer. We'll see you tomorrow night on the Sunfish Radio Network and the Sunfish live stream. Have a good night, everybody.